Got another question here on the year 13 rates of reaction topic. So as always, the link to the question is in the description of the video. So part A, what's meant by the half-life of a reaction? So that's the time taken for the concentration to fall by half from the original value. Okay, for the next part, we've got to confirm the order of reaction with respect to the C6H5N2Cl. So the way I've done this, slightly differently than normally, often I'll just go from the start and concentration and then half that. What I've done this time is I've gone to 5 moles per decimeter cubed and then I've taken it down to 2.5 and, and worked out that time period there. Hope you're going to read the numbers okay, but I will read them out anyway. So that's gone from 10, that's 10 seconds to 64 seconds. So the time taken to go from 5 to 2.5 is 54 seconds, so that is a half-life. The next half-life I've gone for is to go from four down to two. And you can see that's taken, well, it's gone from 28 to 82. So that's another 54 seconds. So from that, we can say that the order of reaction is one because the half-life is constant. So obviously the examiner is going to want to see the working out on your graph and then the summary in your written answer. And the final part of it, there'll be no effect on the half-life if you double the concentration because half-life isn't affected by a concentration change. Part B, we've got to calculate the rate of the reaction at 40 seconds and then using that rate equation, we're going to determine K. So obviously to calculate the um, rate at 40 seconds, we draw a tangent to the curve at 40 seconds. There's going to be some variation in these because um, some people people's tangents are all a, a little bit different. So there would be a range allowed by the exam board. But I'm getting a change in y of 5.2, starting at zero, and my change in time, my change in x is 116 seconds. Again, it starts at zero. So my rate is going to be 5.2 divided by 116. So I'm getting a rate of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 and obviously my units are moles per decimeter cube per seconds because we've divided concentration by time seconds. So to calculate the value for k I've rearranged the rate equation and I'm going to use the rate I've just calculated at 40 seconds and the concentration at 40 seconds comes out at 3.4 moles per decimeter cubed. So that's given me a K value of 0 0.013 and in terms of units I've got the units there of rate over the unit of concentration. You see they'll cancel so it's seconds to the minus one. Now there is another way you can calculate the rate constant for a first, this only works for a first order reaction but because they said using the graph and the rate equation we couldn't use this method. But if they hadn't have said that, I'll just quickly explain this alternative method. So to get K for first order reactions, you can go lin2 over half-life. So lin2 over 54. I'm still getting the same answer. Obviously the units will be the same as well. And finally, part C, the order of reaction with respect to H2 is effectively zero. We've got to explain why. Well, it's down to something mentioned at the very start of the question. We're told that the water's in excess. So when you've got one of your reactants in excess, changing its concentration won't have any effect on the rate.